As usual, January always ends up being that year that I try to catch up on all the releases of that year. And this year is definitely probably the worst I've ever done because I've just taken so long to get to so many films. And there's still quite a few that I haven't seen. And for once, I'm actually going to go by UK release date, which is actually quite fair considering the fact that, like, uh, you need to see a lot of these films in the cinema. So there's only so often I can see it. Silence literally came out in January the 1st, 2017. 2017 so that's technically not a 2016 film for me um you're not going to see la la land you're not going to see moonlight even though i was lucky and did get to see it here um but they did not get an actual uk release date uh, until 2017 so there's a few films that aren't here and that's why um, there's a few films you're going to see here and wonder why they're there so before i get into the actual top 10 and i think some of the honorable mentions for me would be uh films like sing street 13th Deepan from jack odard the uh, French filmmaker, I thought that very good film there. Um, and Hunt for the Wilder People, I, I much enjoyed that too. That's a few of my honourable mentions, and I think we'll just go straight into my top 10 going by UK release dates. At number 10 is Hirokazu Koreeda's new film, Our Little Sister. And this is one of those films that's it's very typical Koreeda. It's about, it's about family, and it's just about these human characters. And it doesn't really focus on much big things. It's It's quite... It just focuses on their quiet little lives together, but there's something very beautiful about seeing their relationships on the screen. So Our Little Sisters is one of those very slow-paced but really enjoyable films um, for their rich characters. It's a kind of a feel-good film, and it's just beautiful to see the loving relationship the, the characters all have together. For Corietta, you know, he's one of the best filmmakers working at the minute, I think, and I'm always excited to see his next films. At number 9 is what I think is a film from the new director, Ciro Guerra. I think that he's a first time filmmaker. And it's Embrace of the Serpent, which I think is definitely one of the standard films of the year. I think it's one that I didn't realise how much I actually appreciated and enjoyed it. It just lingers with me now, many of the images in it. Embrace of the Serpent is a very unique film, it really is. It's a story that hasn't really you know, been told that often. And it really felt like something Werner Herzog would do. It, it focuses on... Um, traveling to the Amazon and basically exploration of the cultures that are there and <clears throat> it's, it's a fascinating film because it makes you think of how people explore the world um, especially you know hundreds of years ago and people trying to conquer places and expand and discover and colonialize and things like that so it's a very interesting film to look at in today's uh, society when we've come so far and the film like I might cinematography uh, the pacing, the music, even the music too. Very, very unique film. I think it's a very bold, stylistically, it's a very bold film. I think it's definitely one of the standout films of the year. And I hope it's one that more people will give a chance. Number eight, Hell or High Water, which is a film that I only got seen a few weeks ago. And I was just so glad that I did because that's a film that, it doesn't, it doesn't mess around. It just gets to the point with, with its narrative. It's got these really hard-boiled characters. It's got a very serious tone and it pulls it off in a, very very good way it's a very serious film just focusing on these two brothers trying to get away and it's like a cat and mouse sort of thing it's a cat and mouse film but there's really no playing around with it and it's got a very great tone the cinematography is gorgeous wonderful soundtrack you know if you like country music and i think that's that's probably the best performance i've seen from jeff Bridges. i was really really happy with it and that's it's one i would like to see again hell high water isn't too long a film and it's just got some really great acting in it that really holds it together. At number seven is the film by Na Hong Jin, the Korean director who also directed The Chaser and The Yellow Sea, The Wailing. The Wailing is a truly terrifying film, honestly, you know. Sometimes the film builds itself up as a comedy, almost at times, and it's some of the things that happen, it's so comical and over the top, you just can't believe it. And then it just gets more and more serious. And I like films that really play with genre that way, where they suddenly become something else as the film goes on. and. It's very hard to do that and pull it off correctly, otherwise, you know, you pull away from what your original message was. But I think uh, The Wailing, it's one of the, probably one of the creepiest films that I've seen in a long time. It's thrilling, it's freaky, and it's one of those films that just has a very, it's got a spiritual edge like The Exorcist, you know, it just kind of spooks you out because you don't really know uh, throughout the film. You're constantly left questioning everything. And it's a very long film. I do think that's the one downside of the film. It is a bit too long. Things get a little too drawn out. I would say you know, the middle section of the film is the slowest, but has an excellent, excellent payoff. And I hope more people check that one out because it's definitely on par with The Exorcist for how creepy it was. It's definitely not one to see before you go to sleep. 
At number six for me is Zootropolis forward slash Zootopia. I gave the film a rewatch and I was laughing just as hard and I just absolutely love that film. I absolutely love what those directors have done with that. The reason I hold Zootropolis up so high is just this is a, a family film, a kids film, and it is made accessible very much so for a general audience and kids. But it's tackling issues that do sometimes get tackled in uh, family movies and stuff, but the way they've done it is a way I think kids are going to really understand. You know, it is looking at diversity, and it is a film looking at racism and intolerance and things like that, and using animals, obviously, as a massive, massive metaphor. And I, I yes, it is a bit high-handed at times, but it is for kids, and they did keep that in mind, you know. Otherwise, they probably would have made something like Animal Farm, I don't know. Well, that's really heavy-handed too. But what Zootropolis does is it manages to be an absolutely fun, hilarious film. It's got combinations of noir in there as well, which I really like. I just absolutely love that film. I just came out of it, you know, just very satisfied. I love the characters, and the voice acting's fantastic. Characters are brilliantly realised. Pacing's great. That's all I can really say about that one. At number five is the Turkish film by Denise Gaza Ed Givan, Mustang. Since I'm here now talking about the film, I just want to say my review. I said um, that it was the father in the film. It's actually the uncle. I, I can't believe I, I made that mistake. I should really stop doing things like that. Uh, but <clears throat> yeah, so it's the, it's the uncle that's taking care of all these sisters. And it's a beautiful, beautiful film. Looking at it's Again, it's just one of these stories that looks at characters that you don't see too often. And you've got all these female characters and their connection together and it's beautiful to see on screen. It's just, it's just great to see such a bold directorial debut. And I, w I don't want to spoil much more about it than that. It's definitely one you need to go and check out. At number four is a film that I just watched about four days ago and it's Anomalisa. And it's one that I was meant to see you know, from the moment it came out I was very interested. And then I, I finally got the chance to see it. And now Charlie Kaufman is... He's a very interesting writer and director. You know, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Cynic Dope, New York, uh, which is one that went over my head at the time, but I think I'll love it the next time I see it. Uh, being John Malkovich as well. Um, his scripts, he's always... He's got, he's, he is an auteur when it comes to writing, and there's always something... I, I feel like his films are really deconstructing the mind, how we process emotion, and how we see the world in this modern modern day. And I think it's fantastic. It's, it's the reason I like a film like Her by Spike Jonze, and who was the director of being John Malkovich also, because it's trying to comment on the human condition in the modern t context. And Anomalisa is definitely a deconstruction of that. It's not a perfect film, and I'll not I'll not try to review the film. I, I had a few problems with it, but Anomalisa, it comes out of the great voice acting that's in there. There's only three voice actors throughout the whole film, and it's incredibly done. But Anomalisa is a film about puppets. Uh, well, you know, it's stop motion and these puppet characters who are much more human than a lot of characters I've seen in half the films from the year, which is quite scary. But it's, it's uh, I think the reason it was animated is really everything goes behind those voices and it adds that extra f element of fantasy and falseness to the world that we see. And I think Anomalisa really, you can tell that Charlie Kaufman is really trying to tackle how we process things and how the human condition really is working in a modern day and Pretty much you have this character having a midlife crisis, so it's, it, again, it's it's not new, the things that he's doing, but he's doing it in a very new way, and I, I don't want to spoil it, so Anomalisa is definitely one that I really, really do admire, and I think it's amazing that people are writing works like this that are really trying to tackle how the human mind works, especially in today's context. At number three is Patterson, directed by Jim Jarmusch. I think that is definitely my favourite film from him at the minute, Next to Night on Earth, and this is a film that's not trying to be bold or audacious. It is audacious, uh, but it's not trying to be loud. It's not trying to draw attention to itself. It's just focusing on its human characters, doing its justice and working on character. As this is a film held up by performance, which is something that we don't see enough of. The, the performances in this film, some of the strongest I've seen in recent years. And this is a film that focuses on the mundanity of of this character. He's just a bus driver, he writes poetry, and he's a wonderfully modest character. Pretty much that's all it is. It's his day-to-day -day life uh, as he writes poetry and lives with his wife. And again, it's bold, it's audacious in the sense that this is a film almost void of conflict, and we have this loving relationship between him and his wife, and we don't see any sex in it, we barely see any kissing, we just see human understanding. Absolutely beautiful to see that, and not having everything overtly sexualized, which 
you know, it was more truer to life, uh, the amount of sex that goes on in life. But I, I felt like it was very interesting that it just made us focus on how much they love each other. And so it was a real, real, true love. And it's beautiful to see. So yeah, that's why number three for me is Patterson. And number two, which is one that you aren't thinking of because, yes, this is a UK film for us. It only came out this time last year and that was The Revenant. And I still haven't seen it at home yet. I haven't watched it since I saw it in the cinema and I was like 10 feet away from the screen. It was unbelievable. Uh, but for me, The Revenant, it's not. It, it was not a boring film. And for anyone out there that tries to challenge and say that he grunts and that's his performance... You really don't understand acting at all. I mean, the stuff that he does without words, it's a very hard thing to do, you know? And he is using his body, he's using sounds, he's using his eyes to act. And I think it's an incredible physical performance. You know, he, and he's literally getting, he's really getting his hands dirty. <clears throat> and it's not to say that just because you roll around in the dirt for a while, you get an Oscar. Um, I think what The Revenant does is it feels like a Herzogian film, you know? It's got that 70s gritty man versus nature feel and I absolutely love it for The Revenant. I still really enjoy it regardless of what other people say. That's my opinion. I really enjoyed The Revenant. It's a great film about survival and expansion and it's man versus nature at its core. And then it becomes a, a great revenge film too. Then finally, at number one is going to be Son of Saul. It really does take the cake for me. This is a it's the strongest directorial debut I've seen in a while from a Hungarian filmmaker, Lazlo Nems, who did win the foreign language film for the Oscars last year. And Son of Saul is a film that focuses on one man during the Holocaust. And I really do like what Mark Kermode said about the film and it not being so much about the entire scope of the Holocaust, but this one man's experience of it. And, you know, with the way it's shot, that it, it definitely speaks to a lot because you've got this four by three ratio old-fashioned ratio and very much throughout the film he is on screen and he's always centered so he really is the center focus of the film and the fact that we don't see much more from his perspective you know our frame is very limited and that's exactly what the experience would have been like as an individual you know your, your viewpoint is very limited you don't know exactly what's going on everywhere so it's I, I think it's great stylistically that they've done that and there's some beautiful shots in there too you know, but overall, I think it's a very bold film, and we're seeing a lot of Holocaust films coming out these days. Well, not a lot, but in the past 20 years, there's been a lot more Holocaust films than ever before, and I think it's always interesting to see how people approach the subject uh, in different ways. So, Son of Saul, for me, is absolutely my number one. I hope more people see it, and I hope I get, I get it's actually on Netflix, and I'm not right here, but it's only got a 2 out of 5 on Netflix, and that makes me very angry. But I'll leave that to a different video. So that is my list. I've won going by UK release dates. Yes, Moonlight is not there. Silence is not there. La La Land's not there. They would all be there if this was a US release list. So thanks everyone for watching. I would love to hear your thoughts um, on my list. I'd like to hear your choices, some films that stood out for you. Uh, how about the worst films that you saw? Because I know a few that are my worst <coughs> dirty grandpa. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time.